Hey there, this is not a get ready and go video. I don't think I have the energy for that this week given everything going on. Just wanted to post a quick video regarding um, my thoughts on the election and going forward. Um, I was absolutely shocked, floored by the results last night. Um, and, you know, I really thought that Hillary had this in the bag. You know, I had um, a cool picture on my Facebook, a profile picture. Um, of the Statue of Liberty with like a the nasty <laughs> sign um, and uh, you know I don't know I just I was so excited about her victory and next steps and the continuation of Obama's legacy his policies and things getting better and I I just had all this hope and I think at the same time I simply accepted her win as a fact as opposed to um, even a possible, a potential loss. It never even crossed my mind. And I think that's where, um, I, you know, I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I went wrong in my assessment of that. But I think I've just been watching um, certain channels nonstop over the course of several days that really gave me the impression, not even just watching certain channels, but just being so plugged in to the news about the election, about the campaign. And it just appearing like it was a shoe in that Trump didn't even have a chance. So last night I was floored. I was stunned. And um, I woke up this morning and the first thing I thought was, was this a dream? Did Trump really just win? And then I looked at my phone and I saw the uh, notifications on my screen and I realized, yeah, that wasn't a dream. He actually became president elect of the United States. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm still processing all of this because um, this is a lot to take in. I mean, President Obama is just so amazing. His family, just like, just the last eight years have been, in my mind, despite all the controversy and all of the attacks against him and so forth, I've just, I've admired him. I mean, it was so historic voting for him uh, both times and me feeling, uh, this feeling of euphoria, knowing that I am electing into office, I'm playing a part, uh, I'm contributing towards history. And I, to a large degree, I felt the exact same way voting for Hillary Clinton. It felt amazing. There was this rush that I felt when I filled in my ballot. And now I'm kind of stuck in the processing phase. Um, I definitely could not tune into the news this morning because um, I just couldn't take it, uh, take it in. Um, it was just, I, I was still in a shock zone and I just wanted to get out, go to work and proceed with my day. And then of course I thought I was okay, like sometime around lunch. Uh, in terms of looking th looking at things on Facebook and seeing what my friends were saying and looking at various news sources and that just, it all came back to me. All of that shock, all of the frustration, etc., it all started hitting me again on different levels. And then, to a large degree, a lot of us who were pro-Hillary or, or maybe anti-Trump, whatever, um, a lot of us are taking this, um, the results of the election very personally for various reasons and without going into detail as to, you know, all the various ways, and I'm sure many videos will be loaded to YouTube on the various ways people will feel directly or feel directly impacted by the results of the election, whether it be perhaps the loss of potential loss of health care, um, impact on uh, women's rights, or perhaps impact on racial relations, cultural relations, immigration. I mean, the list goes on. And it's very easy to see the world coming to an end. Um, but I think that the doomsday mindset after the results of the election and continuing uh, with that mindset is probably the worst things to do. Because even though you, um, let's say hypothetically, if you were pro-Hillary, um, are pro-Hillary, um, and you're very scared about what's happening or what happened, and to some degree perhaps you have um, some fear about what's going to happen and how you're going to be negatively impacted, your friends your family. Um, you really have to um, just take a, a deep breath and pause. And so the reason why I felt compelled to make this video, especially after taking some time to do some processing, is to encourage you to take a deep breath, um, take a break away from the news, take a break away from uh, the internet, Facebook, and, and breathe. Uh, everything's going to be okay. No one can predict 
what's about to happen. I looked at something during my lunch break, which was a bad idea, that said something like headlines from the Trump presidency. And it was like all these doomsday headlines. And I, it, all of that frustration that I felt last night came rushing back to me. And I'm like, wow, I really shouldn't have been looking at this. And of course I started clicking through some more. And then to make matters worse, I started looking at the comments and how people feel negatively impacted. I mean, I saw someone, uh, uh, someone who, uh, wrote about a health condition and how they don't think that they're going to have access to affordable health care once he becomes president. It was all of these really emotional stories that really um, just, I had to close the browser because um, it's, it, it, if you're already feeling emotional about this, reading all of that stuff, being exposed to, um, you know, all of these news channels, etc., and continuing to absorb all of this information through social media, whatever, um, can only make you feel worse. And regardless of any potential impact of um, Trump's presidency and the future, just know and believe that you will be okay. You have to believe that. And um, I, I think uh, feeling sorry for yourself or having fear or feeling like you have to be afraid for the next four years is just not a good idea. A key thing to keep in mind is that you are not helpless. And I think it's very easy to feel that way. Um, you're not helpless. Uh, and there are various ways for you to contribute good, love, um, positivity towards your community, um, towards the world. And I know it sounds incredibly cliche, but I really do think that the one thing that we need um, at a time where a lot of people are focused on other people's hate, other people's anger, other people's um, attitudes towards the other, and so forth, the one thing that um, we can all do individually is find ways, especially during the holiday season and beyond, is to really operate with love and find ways to um, to make a positive impact in the world. And that's a very 50,000 foot level of looking at it, but I think it's important to um, disrupt the, um, the, the element of fear in the processing of the election and really focus more on what can I do as an individual to contribute positivity, make an impact, a positive impact, or what can I do to contribute towards politics? If I lean liberal, should I uh, get more involved in local elections, get involved in XYZ organization, join XYZ board, or whatever it is, uh, perhaps start a blog and share your thoughts, your feelings. You have to find an outlet to um, get your thoughts out there in a positive um, way that will make um, something better, uh, the world better, your community better, other people's lives better, another person's life better. I think by focusing so much on the negative impact of other people, uh, potentially on your life or on your family's life or on your community, it just, it's a never ending cycle and it can, and it can only lead to pent up uh, further pent up frustration and so forth. And I, this video is going on longer than I thought it would, but I really want you to think about how you can contribute positivity and love. If there's a particular cause that you're passionate about, you really should dig deeper into exploring it and finding ways. If you want to donate towards it, if you want to make a difference with that cause, then go ahead and do it. You may feel like Trump's policies are against that cause. Who cares? Pursue it. If that's something you're really passionate about, and you never know where that can lead. And also really focus on self-care right now. Self-care is always important. And I know I sound very new agey saying this, but get a massage, have a glass of wine or some tea or milk, whatever your beverage is of choice. But you really need to take time out for you because if you don't and you just spend time absorbing all of this craziness that, that is um, being spewed at you, um, as I've mentioned a number of times already, it can only make you feel worse. You still have a job or classes or whatever it is that are a part of your day-to-day -day life. You still have a life to lead and you still have people that are influenced by how you live your life. So why not really focus on the positive? Take care of yourself. If you if you didn't vote, um, just and you feel bad about not voting, take it as a lesson learned for the future and get more civically engaged. Um, and I really wish you did vote <laughs> if you didn't. Um, but if you um, weren't able to for whatever reason, or you didn't feel the need to, or you were upset that you know about the candidates or whatever, really get civically engaged. I think that um, the millennial generation in particular um, really does need to get more out there, more politically engaged, get their voice out there. Because if we don't make an effort at least to get our voices heard, um, we really can't get upset when policies 
are released and, um, you know, laws come out that are against our best interests. One of the things, though, that I'll just kind of leave this video on is the, the idea of voting against your best interests. I think that, and I'm trying to be careful how I put this, but I really do think that oftentimes when we do vote, we get all caught up in the hype of what other people tell us about a candidate or what the media says, a particular channel says about a candidate. And we get very caught up in the sensationalism of the candidate as opposed to really doing a deep dive into their policies and what they stand for and what they plan to execute. And I think that we not only need to really do that research, but then think about how does that impact our lives. We can't get caught up in what people say. Assess them by their actions, assess them by their, their statements, their policies and so forth. And gauge all of that against you know, your your financial interests and uh, what you think is the best for your community and so forth. I think I'll leave it there because I can say more on that, but this was just a free thought video and um, I'm going to have a nice glass of red <laughs> and um, continue processing and so forth, but I'm going to take some time out for me because I need it. Anyway, um, have a good one. I just wanted to put this video out there to share my thoughts on this, but everything's going to be okay despite whatever doomsday crap that you hear about. Um, do what you can to contribute positivity and to make a difference, and that's all anyone can ask of you. And if you have other people that are contributing that doomsday stuff into your ear all the time, like, just take some time away. Uh, get some popcorn, relax, and take a deep breath and keep on moving and fight the, the good fight uh, of whatever you believe in and keep on going. So have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.